Hello, hello. How's it going, everybody? This is Etho, and we are back already, already with another episode of Battlebane. Oh my goodness, right? Not even 2008 yet. Two episodes in one year. What a time to be alive. <laughs> Uh, seriously though guys, thank you very much for all the feedback on the last episode, that was really encouraging, and like, like one of my favorite things about this series is, is the great comments I get on it. Um, of course lots of positivity and support is always nice, but there's also a lot of great ideas thrown in the comments, and uh, discussion as well, that really got me thinking, and I have changed my mind about a few things, and um, we got some stuff to try out. I think we're going to focus on uh, what you guys said in the comments today, uh, for the most part, with our episode. Starting with, I guess I'll mention 1.13 Minecraft. Uh, you guys told me Dinnerbone made a post about what he plans on changing with command blocks, which I had missed, so I checked that out. And I think uh, I've, I've seen on the Reddit now, too, that snapshots are going to be coming out any day now. Sounds like... Uh, as far as I understand it anyways, the, what's changing is the syntax of command blocks, like the way you have to format them, but the functions I think are still going to be there. So I'll have to go through all the command blocks and change them, which will probably take a few minutes, but I don't think I'll have to redesign the game. I think this, the functions will still work the same, I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, this is not like a huge game. There's only like 50 command blocks or so right now. So it's not going to be a big impact on me, I don't think. So we're going to continue on with uh, making Battlebane. I know a lot of you told me to wait, but I, th I don't think it's going to be a big deal, honestly. Um, the other thing that was mentioned a lot is is uh, I showed off the way we're placing structures. And, uh, of course, one of the issues was if they land in the water, they're going to spawn underwater which might not be the nicest of things. So uh, two main ideas you guys brought out for fixing that. One of them is to like place a block at Y64, because that is where the surface of the water always is, and then the structure will always land on that and not fall to like the bottom of the ocean or something, right? So I think that's a good idea. And another method that was suggested is to use concrete powder. <laughs> Funny enough. Uh, drop, drop this in the water, and like, let's say the water was, for some reason, up higher, like at Y90. This would ensure the structure always lands uh, in the proper place if we use concrete powder. So I'm going to try that out too, and probably do a mix of both. So even if like for some reason it was a void world they were trying to play this game in the structures would still get placed if we combine the two methods. Okay, so this is pretty interesting actually. Check this out. Uh, there's two methods we could do this. One is using set block to place concrete powder. And of course that spawns it in and then it just falls naturally using uh, gravity. Uh, the other method though, I kind of didn't think would work, but it does and it's better, is uh, we summon a falling block and we make it concrete powder and then we can apply a motion tag to it so it'll fall very quickly because we're accelerating it. Oh, um, what happened there? <laughs> when I was testing it before it worked, that time it disappeared. Yeah, you see that? It actually does check like if it's in water, turn into concrete, even if it's a falling block. Uh, maybe the time isn't long enough. So let's increase the time. Oh, maybe... Oh, no, I think it's just inconsistent. Maybe I can't do this, actually. You see that it's... Uh, oh, it's it's moving so fast, I think it's teleporting and happening in the water here. That's what it is. So I tested some more here. The sweet spot seems to be a motion of 4.0. We had a 10 before. At 4.0, it seems to always work. So that's what we'll do. It's still fairly quick. So yeah, again, our goal here is to get these structures nice and flush with the ground, easy to get in, easy to get out if possible, and I think that'll handle if they land in the water. But another thing mentioned in the comments last episode is what happens when they land in the trees. Like if, if we generate that structure up in the tree, you're gonna have to fall to get out, and you'll have to climb up to get in. 
won't be super nice, right? <laughs> Ideally, we want it to land on the ground. Uh, so something that was suggested is maybe replace all the leaves with air in a column so it'll for sure land on the ground. So that's what this command is going to do. We're going to fill uh, from bottom of bedrock to the top of the world. We'll replace all leaves with air blocks. So it's not going to affect the ground or anything or just leaves. We It would be nice if we could also do it for the trees, but then I'll have to add six more command blocks, I think. One for each type of wood. And that might be a little overkill. So I think we'll just do it for leaves. And I was testing it out. Uh, where did our leaves go? They ran away from me. Here they are. So if we do it on jungle leaves, gets rid of them. If we do it on birch, no problem. Oak, spruce. But then we got acacia and dark oak. They look exactly the same as oak leaves, but they are different. And they don't work with this. There's actually a thing called leaves too. And we have to use that for these two. But that doesn't work on the, the normal leaves. So we'll have to have two command blocks to get rid of leaves. Cool. So that'll be a nice little refinement to our structure placement. We've added 16 new command blocks into our game here. This little 4x4 four four area. And basically, we place a stone block at Y64. We replace the leaves with air, the first four types. And then we replace the other two, Acacia and Dark Oak, with the leaves 2 command here. And then we drop down our concrete powder at a motion of minus 4.0. This, of course, gets replaced when the structure gets made. It'll destroy that concrete, so it's not going to be on the map somewhere. And we're generating four structures, so then we just copy it four times here with different coordinates. So this is minus 400 there, this is minus 400 there, and minus minus on this one. All right, everybody, so let's move on to something else here. I mentioned last episode there's a size limit to uh, structure blocks, 32 by 32 by 32, which you can see highlighted with this cube. And the arena was slightly bigger than that, and that was going to cause a lot of trouble. So you guys actually told me that's just a save limitation in-game. If I use MC Edit and save the arena there and then move that to the structure folder... The, the MBT we create with MC Edit, uh, we can actually exceed the size limit. It's not like a loading limit, it's a save limit within the game. Yeah, so I want to test this out, guys. So we've hopped into MC Edit here. This is our arena, and we've made our quarter selection like we did in game. Uh, but this selection, if you look like where my mouse cursor is, it says 38 wide, 39 long, 38 high. So we've exceeded the 32 limits. And we're going to hit export here. It says export the selection to a schematic file, dot schematic. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not because the structure files are dot nbt, but I think they're the same format. So I'm going to try rename it to a dot nbt. Place that in the structure folder and hopefully it'll work. No. So it seems like it's not going to work, unfortunately. I created two files here. One of them is called arena test.schematic, which doesn't load. And then I tried renaming it as well to arena test2.nbt. So if we do two, that also doesn't load. So I think they're very similar file structures, but slightly different. So the MC Edit version is not going to work in game here for the structures. Uh, now, I did some research on it, and somebody did actually make a program to convert between the two, but I couldn't find a working version of it. And it seems like it's not being updated. So, good idea. Not going to work though. Okay, so doing a little bit of testing here because we have added some stuff to our game and figured out one problem. Uh, can't just set blocks. You have to first get rid of what's there already, turn it into air, and then you can place your block. Aha! Uh -huh. Even if you do replace, still doesn't work. So I think that's a glitch in the game right now. Hopefully it'll get fixed. So let's try it again here, guys. We're in a random world right now. And I've added a couple other things here. I talked about this last time. We were having trouble with uh, something here. Where is it? Here. 
Yeah, uh, when we were rotating our arena, the blocks weren't rotating properly due to a counterclockwise 90 degrees we had here before. Now it's clockwise 270. We'll see if that works. And I've also added a thing at the end here for placing six sides around the arena. We're going to surround it with barrier blocks, so they'll be invisible. And basically, we're forming a rectangle all around it, so players can't get in or out of the arena during the fights. And we'll see if that works, too. So let's give it a go here. Okay, so at 100, should drop the concrete powder. No! <laughs> Why not? I don't know, guys. It's not working still. Yeah, so here's the deal. This is our air block here. If we try to place another air block, it fails. We can place a stone block. If we try to place another stone block, it'll fail because there's one there already. But now we can place an air block. But if we try to do another one, it fails. <laughs> so that's messing up our command blocks. So what I think we need to do, because we can't assume like, we don't know if there's going to be an air block there or a stone block. So what we need to do is change this so that it's unconditional. I think. Well, this one can be conditional, the next one unconditional, right? So if this fails, it still continues on. And likewise, if the stone placement fails, we want this to be unconditional too. And I think think that'll fix our problem. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> that uh, pretty much crashed the game, so we're in a brand new world here. What it did, we, we, we have a countdown timer here that starts at 200 and minus is one uh, every game tick with this uh, repeat command block, right? And only when the timer equals 100 exactly does it allow this chain to continue and do its thing. I think if we switch one of these to unconditional, it activates every time, even if like it doesn't equal 100 here. Just every time it tries to run through the chain here, it does. And I'm going to test that out. I don't know exactly how command blocks work, these new ones, and this will be a good learning experience for me, I think. So what I'm going to do is change this to chain, conditional, chain, conditional, chain conditional okay so if we do say hi for example that'll succeed all right that'll definitely happen this one will do say hello okay and this one will say goodbye okay so we got three things happening there let's get rid of that one we probably don't need it so only hello activated wait what Conditional, needs redstone, we don't want that. Always active. So it says, hello, hi, goodbye. In order, right? So if we were to change this to something that doesn't do anything, that doesn't, doesn't work, ASDF, that's not a command that's going to succeed, then nothing happens here because it's an unknown command in our output here. But I think if we change this to unconditional, it'll still activate even though the rest of the chain doesn't. Yeah, okay, so that that's what was uh, causing trouble. It ended up placing like 200 structures and, and lagging the game out. <laughs> um, it was kind of crazy. So what I've done now is these are the commands that ha are likely to fail, and I don't want that them in our chain here because if they fail the chain fails um, and if I turn them to unconditional they activate every game tick regardless of whether this equals 100 so I'm gonna separate them from our chain here this will place a redstone block three blocks above so one two three right in the middle here and then it's gonna try to do this whether or not it succeeds doesn't really matter and it's going to try to remove the leaves. Those That may or may not fail. And then finally this will um, get rid of the redstone block that gets placed there. Anyways, let's give this a try. I think it'll work now. Hopefully. 
But if not, we might witness a spectacular crash here. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, it did something. I think it turned it to stone there. Place the structure. Oh, and we even we even get a witness a water test here. So this is what it's supposed to uh, work with. All right. Oh, did the timer not reset? It said zero. Huh, so we got a little bit of a mystery here, guys. There is a redstone block right here. There's supposed to be a command block there that changes the timer to 200. How did it get here? Where did it come from? I'm not sure. <laughs> My best guess is from this command block. It's supposed to place a redstone block at minus 1z, which should be in front of it here in this gap. And if you look at the coordinates, minus Z is definitely this direction that we're facing. So why is this here? I don't know. But it wrecked our thing. I think I figured it out, guys. There's some command blocks at the end here that place a redstone block at the beginning. And I forgot we made this chain longer by adding or inserting some, some new commands into it, right? So this one at the end here is supposed to place a redstone block over here, but it was missing and placing it here. So hopefully now everything should be perfect. Let's try one more time. Um, this is getting taller because I, I ran it a few more times, but it seems to be working when it does work. Amazing, right? Okay, here we go. Timer hit 200 this time, so we should get a water placement. Yeah, there's the concrete. Look at that. <laughs> so that lined up with the water not too bad, I think. It was good. And now we got that other stuff to test too. The rotation on the arena and also the cage around it. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. So it's placing the arena. Did it do the whole thing? Is it good? No, I think it missed the one we changed. <laughs> no. Oh, there is a barrier around here, too. Okay, so that works. That's good. Yeah. So the plan is, like, if people get... If they fall into the void or something during the arena fights, they'll land, like, over here. And then we'll have another command block to detect if anybody's down here. And then it'll just kill them. Um, so if they go out of bounds, they die, basically. But yeah, I think we got a roof, too, right? Cool. So we got a we got a cage all around the arena here. That's good. All right, guys. So maybe we'll uh, check out one more thing here. I've been trying to resurrect the old team joining system, uh, which has gone through many versions over time. Like w where we're at right now was the original spawning platform where you join a team by going through these gates, which doesn't work. <laughs> and then there was like a button there and. Yeah, it wasn't a very fancy system, but it, it worked at the time. It was the best you could do. But now we got fancy command blocks, and we made a thing over there for joining teams just by stepping on different clay colors, which I've been trying to get working again using the new command blocks. So you see when we walk on green clay, we join the green team. The three there is just to order the names. Um, so everybody on blue team will get a two by their name. And then they'll be grouped together on the on the display there, basically. I noticed red team, though, is in white. So I've been trying to figure out why. And I guess you got to set the team colors when you create the team. Or after you create the team, I mean. Uh, spectators is zero. So that all seems to be working good, though. And that's being done with those 10 purple command blocks here, these repeat ones. So basically, this checks... Uh, all players detect what's underneath their feet by one block below them. And then it checks if it's stain clay number nine, that's cyan uh, clay. If so, then join them to the spectators team if they're not already on the spectators team. And we do that with the red team, blue, green, and yellow. And this over here, uh, what does this do again? Set players... Spectator. Oh yeah, so if uh, somebody's on the spectator team, then they get a zero by their name. 
uh, basically. So they get ordered in the, in the list here properly. All right, and something else we got to do is like when we create the spawning platform in the new random worlds, uh, we'll want to execute this where it will create the team. So we add a spectators team here, red team, blue team, green team, yellow team. And I guess to do the colors, we got to do, I've been trying to figure that out. Score board teams, I think it's options. All right, so I guess what we got to do is scoreboard teams option. Then we got to tell it what team. So we're going to do for the red team. We want to change the display here to red color, not white. Um, red team. So we do color then spelled without a U like it's supposed to be. And then we tell it what color. And I think we can just do red. Yeah, so now if we step on a red clay block, it should actually be... Oh, that's concrete. Uh, hardened, it's not called hardened clay, terracotta. Okay, let's see if it changes red. Yeah, so now it's red. So we got to add command blocks for setting the colors, the team colors. So we'll take our command we just did, copy, and paste it into here. And I'll do that for all the teams. Cool, so we got uh, gray for spectators. We got red for red team, blue for blue team, green for green team, and guess what color for yellow team? Yellow. Yeah. Okay, and then apparently there's something for toggling the name tag visibility of a team. So once the game starts, I don't, I don't think we should do it while uh, people are still joining the team so that people can see their names and stuff. But once the game starts, we're going to trigger this too. So red team blue team, green team, yellow team, will all hide their name tag for other teams. So if you look down, you won't be able to see people underground just by their name tag or something. That's what we uh, used to always do in UHC. You'd look for for name tags to find people. But I think since the map is already pretty small and there's going to be a lot of signs of where people are, uh, I don't want name tags to be one of the ways you find people. So we're going to shut that off once the game starts as well as this whole team joining system will not be running during the game, just before when we're trying to get people on teams. All right. And I noticed the way this is working is I think, uh, I think we have something called team display. This is something I did like years ago, right? So I don't remember how it all works, but I think there's a objective called team display and we need to create that somehow, not just like manually. We need a command block to do it. Oh, uh, so let's do it over here. Maybe scoreboard, objectives, add. You know, I find it a lot easier to do it here. <laughs> uh, what are our options again? So we got to pick a name. And we called it team display. So team display. And criteria type is a dummy objective. And then display, I think, is teams. Like that. So we'll copy that, put that into here. Okay. And then we got to set it on the sidebar here. I don't remember how I did that. Scoreboard objectives. Set display. Oh, this is it. Yeah. Um, sidebar. Yeah. And then we tell it what objective, right? Oh, we just cleared it. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, objective team display. Yeah, that's how you make it show up. Okay, so we'll add another command for doing that. That will go here. And of course, let's also test it out here. So I'm going to remove all the teams from our scoreboard. And I'm going to remove that uh, team display objective. Remove team display. So everything is gone. If we look at our team list, there's this font team there. I don't know what that is actually. So I'm going to probably get rid of it. <laughs> I added that a long time ago. Don't know what it does now. Scoreboard teams. I guess let's remove it. Font team. So we got no. Oh, font team. Okay. We got no teams on the list now. So when we power this, these should all be failing right now, but they're still running. Um, 
when we power this, it should create the team, set the colors, and all that fun stuff, hopefully. And it's not going to show up until I actually walk on one of these, I think. Yeah, there we go. So that's all working. When we create a new world, it should be able to set that up properly. Cool. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap up here for today. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. I know this is a bit more of a technical thing, <laughs> and I'm not very good at it. But uh, I'll try my best to keep these interesting and hopefully maybe a little entertaining. We'll see. But once again, thank you for your support with the series, and I hope to see you in another one very soon. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.